by the decree of the Fire Nation. I want you all to subscribe. To the Red Knight 777 channel. To the Red Knight 777 channel. I'll be doing the, I'll be saying things around here. Don't tell oh, me what to I'm say. I'm sorry. Oh my God. You're banished. I'm banished. From the Fire Nation? Yes. <laughs> to the live Q&A. How the hell are you guys doing this morning? Well, we've got a, quite a ton to show you uh, just before we get started. Uh, we already announced that Christian's probably going to be in a knockout. Speaking of knockout, so we have, you guys saw the uh, the previous Solitude, Solitaire movie, right? Yeah. Uh, we played Solitaire and went mad. Well, we've got a sequel. Uh, we're going to be playing Space Cadet Pinball. And also a lot more reveal for the Solitude story. You'll also get to see Baby Xavier uh, and his origin on how he got his mask. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. He got a fatty. <laughs> okay, so I love that. If you remember Brothers in Arms, we had three different um, we had Five Nights at Freddy's, Hello Neighbor. And Bendy, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and there's a bridge segment, um, Hippo Tries Not to Die. So, and, and, and the original Brothers in Arms, uh, each boss only had one phase. Um, we're gonna have, at, at least at least for the Among Us one, we have three phases, I think. Um, so this is the first phase, we have a bunch of guys running around. Uh, this long leg boy was uh, done by Nade. Um, and this big buff boy was done by Nick, I think. And, um, <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> we, we wanted to make it cursed a little bit, you know. Oh, I feel like that's, that's I feel like that's a bit good. So, so this is phase two. It's gonna be like lasers and things. And for phase three, once you break all the shields, he's gonna go a little, a little, a little wacky, a little goofy. A little goofy. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, the reason he had, you'll notice he has three fingers and a thumb here. Um, and for the radio edit, we had these, these, you know, these big hands, these, these big amorphous hands. Uh, that was done with an extra finger, so he grows one. Because <laughs> I wanted to read the one to I didn't even notice that. Wow. And we only have like one more thing to show for a bit, but I think you're gonna enjoy this one. Oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Invoking the uh, tombstone in the actual game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's and then cool. Phase two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so this this big, this big boy, yeah. this big boy. I've been work. I've been slaving for two months just on this stuff.
Supposed to be cheers. No, no that's what she does. I made a mistake once, oh. but I'm gonna stick by my mistake. Oh my so god. Danny, well, who are these people? That's Please explain. Uh, Captain Wolf, uh, Commander Wolf's hat, and this is one of the commandos. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Team Neutron. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you guys doing today? So I'd like to introduce myself and then everyone else. I'm Jake Neutron. Bro. I'm Yo, it's Crow. <laughs> We've collabed with them once. Um, next is Victor, who is a musician on Team Neutron. And, and uh, Hershey, who is a production assistant on Team Neutron. Hello. <laughs> now, real quick, what is Team Neutron? Uh, I probably have introduced it multiple times, but essentially, Team Neutron is the team that I've made to help me with making my videos. Um, I've been mainly working alone for pretty much all of the YouTube, all, all the YouTube channels existed. This game that could almost be the equivalent as, of like their own games to some extent. Some people have even more things going for it than the base game does as of the moment. But what we decided is that because they're projects people are working on creatively, why not showcase those? And there are actual examples online of uh, online, we sometimes call them showcases, directs, etc. Some of them are from, for indie games, some of them are for maybe companies that are bigger who want to showcase, for example, games or whatnot that are coming out, like a, uh, yeah, Nintendo Direct. That's so the TLDR, yeah. Nintendo Direct, but for Friday Night Funkin'. Yeah, basically. <laughs> to, to some extent, because a lot of people do this direct format, and what we did with Function is that I like those formats and stuff. I think they're very entertaining. We have been knew we were going to do an Oswald thing. Um, wasn't going to be versus Oswald because that project was ambitious and I wanted to make sure that we were starting off with small stuff. Uh, but this was around when I was getting way more into the fact that one, Oswald is a public domain character and people should be able to make stuff with that public domain character. Um, so I was developing a public Oswald to be legally distinct enough to where maybe we leave us alone. And actually, the thing we were going to do with this was way different, um, but it was really ambitious as well. So we decided to hone in on the fact of, we hone in on discussing the copyright and trademark stuff, and we did a dual project where it was both a video essay discussing um, Oswald's whole situation, which is very interesting, and also an FNF mob because I could not help myself. No. Um, uh, Victor had actually sent. Um, it's very different from how the song finally ended up sounding, and I wanted to show you guys this. Um, this one will look you up. Court of your superiors and jurors, we would like to begin this session by your opening statements. I'm saying I didn't finish. I'm a person too, so even if I'm a cartoon one, um, but I'm not going to let this go without a final, so it'll be it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back a few days later, things sounded completely different. 
it sounded like this, which is way closer to the front. Which I'm pretty sure the way we went about this was when he sent this. All I ended up doing was remixing this to extend this on the magic bass and the lyrics. And it was just so really at the end of the day, trademark trouble, Victor is the backbone of trademark trouble. I had started working on a collector thing originally. Uh, I remember I had released like a scrap demo, um, and I released it just because I had worked on it, and uh, I knew I wasn't going to continue it, but people still might be interested in it. Um, but I always wanted to come back to it, and the Owl House was coming back. I think I don't remember if it was for season three, episode one or two. I think one, because it's been a bit, and. Uh, I wanted to try and make something because I was I was like uh, I was really fixated on um, the aesthetic of the collector. The person that I had sought out to voice the collector, I had heard their uh, takes of because I had I had already like gotten them on. Um, they had sent in some voice lines that were in the script, and they had sent uh, singing vocals for the chromatic. Um, and I heard it, and I was like, wait, 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 like she can sing, sing. Why don't we just do a nerd chorus song? Three, two, so this is a remix. Go! boom was first starting to happen, I found it absolutely terrifying. Um, but in multiple ways, both in terms of, um, it's scary to think about what the industry might try to do with it and how they might go about routes that exclude artists. Um, but also it was really interesting to see what that technology would make and why it made these weird mistakes that were so easy for us. Um, and I felt like there was uh, stuff to be said with that, um, especially like creepy things to be said with that. Um, for some reason, I keep gravitating towards horror. Um, and what we were going to do for part two of Public Oswald was we we're going to have Oswald verse an AI version of himself. <laughs> and um, one of the first things that I remember um, was trying to figure this out was we wanted to design I remember what it was, a house ball, I don't even know how to say it. We wanted to design him um, as if he was like AI generated, but obviously he wasn't. Just, uh, an early pass of the song, but I still wanted to be able to show you guys. <laughs> you might recognize the song being played here. Thank <laughs> you. 
She'll take it beyond to what everyone's dreaming of. She's taking me so right up, down, down. Oh, can you hear me? We don't have much time. You need to. So I was kind of wondering, cause I know like a lot of people who get into FNF originally, you know, they appreciate for what it was, but over time they're like, ah, I'm kind of getting tired of it. So do you feel kind of like that for your reputation or do you feel like you've been so innovative that you've gotten past that maybe? Um, hmm. My feelings on FNF is I still love it. I still feel okay. like it's a really versatile movie to do um, fun little musical stories. And like they don't even need lyrics. Um, you can just uh, have all the story happen in game. Um, although I kind of feel like there might, there, there's probably room for more lyrical FNF songs. Yeah. Um, but in terms of how I feel about it, um, I feel like. I'm slowly starting to like inch away from FNF, not because I don't find it interesting anymore, but it's because it's less of the projects that I want to do are convenient to do in FNF. Yeah. And now it's starting to seem more like uh, I might have to, I might start doing a mixture. Like sometimes I'll do FNF, sometimes I'll do lyrical stuff. Because um, I know I definitely still have FNF projects that I really want. To do. Yeah. Um, I feel like the kind of project that like would be um, the one that I. It, it's it's done, it's done, and that's the last FNF project would maybe be like versus Oswald, because that one, everything that I want to do with FNF is planned for in versus Oswald. Okay. That would be the peak for me. That makes sense.
think let's start. That's uh, right. I think we should start. Okay. This is Sam Heft, I'm Yav Landau, and we are the YouTube Star! This next one, I'm so happy a lot of you guys love it, so without further ado. You guys ready? <laughs> Let's go!
Stop chewing so fucking loud, bro. Leave that little guy alone. What the fuck is you gonna do if I don't? <laughs> My God. All right then.
That's crazy. Danny, what is this line for this right here? This is for FNAF trivia. What me and Jordan thought we were going to win. But there's a bunch of people dressed up in full cosplay, so we're not going to win. And because how does that make you nerds. feel? And how does that make you feel? It's sad, because I want you to try. <laughs> And we were actually at, uh, so my son and I used to go down to Comic-Con, San Diego, 
in the days when you could actually show up and actually get into Comic Con on the day that you showed up, so it was a while ago. And that's when actually I heard on the radio traveling down there that Mako had passed away, and that's when, oh, they're actually looking for a replacement. But you know, I, we went to the Comic Con, didn't think anything about it, went back to work with Disney the next week, and I think it was like a Wednesday, something like that. And after 13 years of the company, I was laid off. Damn. For, the, for the first time, Disney laid me off twice, but that's another story. Oh. <laughs> and that's, that's just how Disney goes. But uh, so I was devastated, you know. Absolutely ridiculous. I was devastated. And literally, within an hour, my agent calls me and they say, Nick Lowy wants to see you in person. You're the top pick for Uncle Iron Man. So when you hear them say, when one door closes, another door opens, I can absolutely say with absolute certainty that that can happen sometimes. So from that point, I went down, I think I went down to Nickelodeon about three times. And every time I went, there were more people layered in. So by the last audition, I'm literally there, Mike and Brian are there, all the, the executives from Nickelodeon are there, Andre Romano's there, I'm literally there's lots of people on the other side of the booth. And I report, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm terrified, you know, I'm pretty terrified. This is, I know this is a big life-changing possibility for me. And so I do my audition, I think I did pretty well. And Andrea says, okay, we're gonna turn off the, uh, the sound out here so we can talk about you. <laughs> and, and I literally remember looking at these people all talking animatedly to one another, thinking these guys are debating my future career, you know? Is it gonna be business and legal affairs or something really cool, like traveling to you know, Atlanta, Momocon? <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately, I was, even then, I think it was another two weeks before they called me, and I thought, oh, well, that's it, they chose somebody else, but they did finally call. And the very next day, I didn't mean to do it, we had already planned on making the kids to Disneyland the next day and making them out of school. So in my case, what do you do when you get cast as Uncle Iroh? I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a big, it was a big I wept. The fireworks never made me weep quite as much as they did that night. My, uh, my wife was talking to her one time, and I said, you know, I think it's ironic that I have only one nephew in all the world, and Iroh is supposed to be famous, you know, living this uncle, I just have one nephew. And she said to me, it's one of the nicest things she ever said to me. She said, Greg, you have millions of these. And I, you know what, I get a little choked up thinking about it. I do, I, it sounds a little, I do think of you as my nieces and nephews. I really do. And you know what, I, 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 I honor that show and I honor this wonderful character. And as I've told people at my table, you know, they want to know if I really is my favorite character. And I say, no, he's not my favorite character. Aku is a character, he's a great character, but he's a character. SpongeBob SquarePants, he's a character. Based on the amount of actual good that Iroh has done in the real world, that's not a character. That's real. Iroh is absolutely real. He's as real as, he's as, real as Santa Claus, and I'm here to tell you that Santa Claus is absolutely real. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Welcome to the Gladness Geek Presents Pokemon Gotta Cook Em All. Yeah! Momocon 2023. Now, you see, I'm sure that you all of y'all Pokemon fans, or at least those who have heard of Pokemon, um, see Pokemon as, you know, adorable little creatures that say their own name and um, you fight with them. I, however, and it seems like many of you, also see them as delicious creatures housed in hypodimensional mm. bento balls. So, today we're going to ask, what do Pokemon taste like? It's yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Now it's actually kinda of interesting. The far fetched comes from um concept of far fetched comes from a Chinese pro well not Chinese, a Japanese proverb of a brown duck bearing green onions, which means surprising but convenient. It is a seared duck breast with uh, seared leeks. A brown rice, uh, brown uh, short rice patty, and a plum lime gravy, uh, duck mat gravy. Oh, oh rip! Uh, they are in PDF format. Just download them, and then you can print them out in 8.5 lm format, letter size. Christine, with a uh, bulbasaur, with uh, I believe. What did I do? Oh uh, yeah, sake simmered spinach as well as soy sauce and pearl onions. Uh, the Charmander Chomps, which is a mixture, mixture of uh, 
carissa powder and cream cheese with some crystallized ginger and dried apricot a little bit of red pepper and squirrel slices which are cucumber with cream cheese mint and blueberries i figure cucumber because uh, you got the whole kappa sort of theme there and yes i know the only thing that really probably uses any part of the animal is the bulbasaur but it was before i made up this panel this is from like five years ago Catherine, what Many years have passed since the Great War Pokemon War. Ask Ketchum has lost all of his friends in the war and has decided that he needs to take away the weapons. He must kill them all. He dedicated his life to ridding the world of Pokemon. Uh, and yes, this is a recipe uh, for Pidgey. Yes, berry glazed Pidgey. We're like that Pidgey. Obviously, we think gator meat. Uh, I think a very light, fresh flavor. Uh, you know, he's a water Pokemon. So, uh, with the Johto region, or is it Kohen or Johto? I can't remember. Full time. Johto being very similar to the Kanto region, i.e., where Osaka is, uh, one of their most popular dishes. In fact, it was invented there is kushiyagi, which is various bites of meats on skewers, breaded in panko and uh, deep fried to a nice, crispy and yet very moist, yes I said the word, uh, mm -hmm. delicious bite. Uh, I mean, we're, we're basically talking a, a fire, a, a fire porcupine. I decided to go for his eggs instead. <laughs> So another particular um, Johto region specialty is Japanese curry. Nice. The mushroom crab. I was so ready for the third Gen 2 starter. I was like, cool, I got my, no, Paris, great. Uh, what I did years ago was an evening and morning in Paris. <laughs> so we have sake steamed crab legs with a lemongrass butter and using leftover meat, oh, and uh, shiitake mushroom cheddar biscuits. And um, Benedict made the following morning with the leftovers and um, shiitake mushrooms on top with a lemongrass holland uh, hollandaise sauce with mirin. A lot of people are gonna say, sorry, a lot of people are gonna say that Chikorita is clearly uh, a grass type, plant type. Man, I'm bad at Pokemon. Uh, Chikorita is, a, is like wasabi. Another particular uh, speciality of the Hoenn region, i.e. the Jodo region, yeah. Jodo region is uh, Oshi Sushi, which is pressed, pressed sushi. And I figured, you know, with uh, the fact that Chikorita it makes a lovely soothing scent that calms everybody, uh, that sushi rice is made with matcha powder, got avocado, Cucumber, shiso leaf, um, and dry cherries because for some reason Publix was not carrying canned cherries. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we like my kitchen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're going to eat I'm noticing, I'm noticing about half the panel, it's probably born past like. Uh, or before, I want to say the 90s, uh, probably just all groaned at once when I said, do you like mud kips? Um, and pretty much everyone else yeah. just kind of going, what? We're yeah. ourselves there. <laughs> so, the particular region the mud kip is from, yes, which is based off of Kyushu, there are hot springs. Uh, where you can, there are several restaurants where you can uh, basically get a basket full of food and have it steam directly in the hot spring. It's called Hell Steaming, but since it's a family uh, friendly panel, this is Hex Steam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, since I don't have an onsen in my kitchen, I have a wok and a steamer basket, and it, the water does not, the steam does not get that hot. It's Hex Steamed. So, this is actually based off a uh, Japanese dish for sake steamed uh, fish. The uh, thing is, the mud kip is based off the mud skipper and possibly the axolotty. And because my search history as a food blogger is um, identical to that of an axe, but murderer, 
uh, I found out that Axolotti tastes like whiting, like Pacific whiting. So, um, we did Pacific whiting with a mixture of sake and pear juice because I like pear. <laughs> This is a hot chicken sandwich right here. Yeah, you're gonna want to brine this in some pickles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> pickle brine, uh, lots, lots of hot sauce. This is, this is uh, your, your mouth is gonna hurt from, uh, from eating this one. Uh, I think your heart is gonna hurt as well. Just look at him. You had to make this one the dancing gift. So, we all know, well, let us know about the torch, that they have a certain organ that is a little flame inside of them. So that's why I made jalapeno poppers. Mm -hmm. The chicken non uh jalapeno poppers where it is wrapped in ground chicken, stuffed with cheese, and then fried, battered and fried in the non style, which is also very, very popular in Yushu. And then soaked in some bird eye chili. Ah, vinegar. Uh, so, four chicken. Oh my god. Get rid of No, don't do that. Okay, all of us. All of us. Well, please, let's hear it. I mean, look at it. Right? It's a mochi. Oh, okay. Oh, flour to the outside of that, grease it, and then just, again, a giant egg. Oh, <laughs> My good friend, Kyrie McCauley, she is uh, has a food blog, Pretty Cake Machine. Uh, she would have loved to be here today to be on this panel, but she is also a professional cake decorator, and it's wedding season. <laughs> So, I present to you Jigglypuff ice cream cakes. Filled with strawberry ice cream and chocolate rice krispies. stuff from FNAF, Among Us, Bendy, Poppy Playtime, as you saw in Teacher Trails. We do AAA stuff like Dead Space as well. Uh, as you saw, you will be briefed by my new stories, a artificial intelligence Dovacom for all the entire section. And a mysteriously big massacre. So, and we all of that, right? So, our next one. Who here remembers a little game called Showdown Bandit? Well, we made it a long while ago, and this one we like to call Looking for a Showdown. Who wears 
the hat. <laughs> yeah, oh, do I? Oh, cool. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, going into the triple A scene. Who remembers Dead Space? Yeah. Woo! Um, that is part of my teenagehood for a long number of years. I've always loved Glenn Schofield's work with video gaming. And they've recently made a remake. I'm super excited about like actually completing it finally. <laughs> I'm busy, I'm busy. But we did manage to make a song out of this one. This is where we start getting pretty heavy. And uh, this actually opened up a lot of opportunities for us. So, if you're ready, let's begin. The song is called, I'll Make the Mahole. Yeah! This is a message for those who live the life beyond my
nervous because I have um, lung problems from long COVID, and I was scared to do the song that I originally recorded it with Will. So this is. I got my work cut out for me. I've been working hard on a ruined DLC song, and a movie song, and a Help Wanted 2 song. <laughs> and trust me, I'm actually really happy with it, don't worry. I'm actually really happy. All right, but speaking of, we did do something for Security Breach a while back. We've written the song a month before the game was released, and we'll release it just about after the game was released. But we like to call this one, Moving Up In The World. It was nominated for a few awards on Steam. Didn't make it, but the fact it was nominated is incredible. I know the crew, and they have put so much passion into this game, and I love it to pieces. And I figured, I need to make one. So, this is my Dark Revival song. And uh, just to skew things up, I actually really enjoyed making this one. So, in the spirit of Build Our Machine, we have Are You Proud of Me Now? <laughs> The saw before I'm sat still staring at paper. There's things behind the page. Oh, that was so fun. Ooh, what do we have here? So, if any of you know me, I don't just have DA games. I have a side channel called Will Ryan Originals. We have a series of short stories in the works in the size of Pandorium. And this is one of our stories, Human. Nothing's really detailed about it thus far, but we have a song that can give you a little bit of an idea what's going on with it. This one's very close to me because it describes the idea of constantly living chronically online and not being able to take a rest. Being bound by the algorithm, being bound by what one people want to show you through the For You tabs and the following tabs on Twitter. You can't escape it. And sometimes we just need to put our phone down and go outside and be with our loved ones. Who feels that? Well, this one I like to call Living Life Without the Cord. Just 
So we're gonna sign this out with, uh, if you have, I've got another original album, but it's more on DA Games' side, Flash Drive. So you guys like here were the very reason our flash drive flash drive sold out and we thought it was nothing. Like we couldn't do anything with like it's not gonna push. And I was like, hey, if they push, we'll remake the entire album from scratch and extend the songs. And now I've got a job to do. So we released a deluxe track earlier than last year. And uh, this one's very near and dear to me. It's dealing with the memories that we make for the grieving that we have. So the people who we've lost, it's not that they're gone. The thing that they leave behind is that gold mine of memories that you'll always cherish. And that to me, I lost a lot of people throughout the pandemic. And this is my song dedicated to them as their wings can fly. This is Gold SSD. I spent a long number of months working on the Iris lore and everything and just putting all of this show together and everything. You just made this one of my favorite conventions ever. Oh, yeah. Woo! Seriously, can I also give a round of Come up on stage, the DA crew. We have had so much fun with these guys. It's insane. Thanks so much, guys. It's no secret that the world in which we live is very dark right now. That is why it is important to look for the light. If you look for the light, you will often find it. Look for the dark. That is all you will ever see. In the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. Thank you so much, Uncle Iroh. That? that was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.